So this has been uh, a little series that we've uh, developed on uh, medical <clears throat> errors, and what we do is look at our own error cases, analyze them, and uh, try to learn from our own experience. So let me present. A, let me start by presenting a case of my own. This is a 34-year-old woman with dizziness. Uh, she, that was her word, by which she met a sense of impending faint, uh, only occurring in the upright posture. As we all know, dizziness can be can be vertigo, which is an illusion of motion, or near syncope, the impending faint feeling, disequilibrium, which is a gait disorder, and or anxiety. And she was clearly complaining of impending faint. The problem was present for a couple of years, but was clearly worsening in the past few months. Meclizine yielded no benefit. She had been told by an autonomic specialist that she had the postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, or POTS, meaning that her heart rate went up, but her blood pressure did not drop uh, when, taking the, uh, when assuming the upright posture. She was given mitodrine, which actually caused her to have uh, hypertension, but actually had no benefit on this symptom. She was uh, told to use the, use the leg crossing and thigh clenching maneuver, which had modest benefits. Uh, we might be able to talk about that a little bit more later. Um, but uh, but less so in the past three months. So let's look at the next uh, slide, and that uh, will give you her examination. So her um, blood pressure lying down was 130 over 75. Sitting, it was 150 over 90. And standing, it was 110 over 65. And symptoms developed. Her heart rate, heart rate was 72 lying, 84 sitting, and 110 standing with symptoms. Her cardiac exam uh, was normal, her mental state was normal, and her neurological examination was completely normal. So uh, uh, Hugh, what do, you, what do you make out of this? This is a near syncope kind of, uh, kind of dizziness. What do you make out of this, uh, this story and this exam? Well, I mean, her, her postural vital signs are obviously strikingly abnormal. I always think of, uh, I mean, I think a couple things are worth mentioning. The number of Physicians that forget to check orthostatic vital signs is really striking. So, you know, it's the, it's the most important diagnostic maneuver that I do in the clinic. But obviously, she has this dramatic increase in her heart rate with standing. I usually use the 28 beat per minute or greater cutoff in increase in heart rate with standing as being abnormal. What's striking about her is she also has a significant fall in her blood pressure on standing. So it's, it's not only pure POTS where the blood systolic blood pressure, at least in my experience, stays pretty much stable, but it also is a significant drop in blood pressure with 20 millimeters of mercury being the cutoff. So I think she has you know, clearly autonomic dysfunction, postural intolerance, orthostatic intolerance, but clearly I think it's pretty clear where her symptoms are coming from, how to treat it is going to be the challenge. Uh, what do you make of the fact that her blood pressure rose on sitting and then dropped again when standing? Well, I... I sort of view that increase in heart and blood pressure on sitting to be sort of a catecholamine surge. So she goes from lying to sitting, has a big surge in catecholamines. Uh, and then obviously, with, you know, with standing, that pressure fell. So I, it's sort of an unusual pattern, at least. I haven't observed this kind of pattern very often. Uh, Jennifer, Cliff, you want to make any uh, quick remarks about this before we go on in this case? I don't want to spend too much time on each case, but uh, there's a sort of an interesting, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting pattern, isn't it? Well, I think it's, it's as Cliff, I think it's very important when you're faced with a patient who says they're dizzy uh, to ask them what do they mean by that. And I think the best thing I'm going to add right now is that uh, the patient who is, uh, gives you the information that she feels as though she's going to faint is a lot different than someone who says that the room is spinning and she gets nauseous. So I think that as soon as you see this and as soon as you measure the orthostatic hypotension with positional change, you are looking to more toward an uh, autonomic issue than a central or peripheral vestibular issue. That's great. Uh, Jennifer, any remarks about this one? I don't uh, want I don't want to put people in an unusual position well, where I, they I, have to comment. But No, I agree. It sounds uh, like Cliff said. It's like otologic is not – otologic other than a perfusion problem is not – is not real high on this list to me. Right. Next slide then, I think, and uh, let's look what happened here. So uh, this woman turned out to have an adre uh, a pheochros pheochromocytoma of the adrenal. Um, uh, now, what, do you, what would you choose from on this list if you were trying to, if trying to choose, thinking about this prospectively? Do you think this was really POTS? Do you think it was an outflow obstruction? 
uh, was it toxic pseudocardiomyopathy? Was it anxiety on standing, which can cause POTS or a paraganglioma? And the next slide will show you what uh, what was learned about this case. And this this was a this was a pheochromocytoma of the adrenal gland. Um, uh, show show the next slide again, Kelly. Um, so I I want to make the point in this case that uh, this is a very unusual pattern on orthostatic testing, which was done actually very fastidiously by the doctors who were taking care of this patient. And I think Hugh uh, hit it right on the head that there was a catecholamine phenomenon that occurred in the sitting position, and her highest blood pressure was in the sitting position, which should have indicated to people that um, something about abdominal compression was causing her blood pressure to go up. Now you say, well, why, then, why was she orthostatic with a pheo? It turns out about, uh, about a quarter of people with a pheo will actually present with orthostatic hypotension and dizziness. And the presumption is that this is, um, uh, is a desensitization of that catecholamine receptor because of intermittent pulses of catecholamines over many months or years uh, so that they become relatively insensitive to the catecholamine surge. And, um, and that's why they, they present with orthostatic hypotension. And this pattern actually is quite typical of this rare disease. So. As the person sits up, there's compression of the abdomen, catecholamines are excreted, the blood pressure rises, and are not standing. They become orthostatic, heart rate goes up. So it's an unusual uh, diagnosis, but it, I think, uh, is very important in principle to think about what it is that causes uh, neurogenic orthostatic hypotension and dizziness. So, Marty, how was the diagnosis finally made? Was it made on uh, measuring catecholamines in the serum or by an imaging study or both? Yeah, so catecholamines were measured. Once uh, people twigged to the idea uh, and realized that the blood pressure was highest in the sitting position, then they imaged the uh, abdomen, and uh, there was an adrenal tumor. Uh, and then it was pretty obvious what was going on. She was alpha and beta blocked. The tumor was removed. It was a pheo, and the syndrome was uh, gone. Mm -hmm. So, it's, you know, this is an unusual cause of dizziness, but the, the number of important principles here that chronic exposure to intermittent uh, uh, catecholamines will cause denervation supersensitivity, essentially, of the, of the end organ. You get this or orthostatic uh, change, which is um, uh, with the blood pressure highest in the sitting position with abdominal compression. 